implications of, of natural gas drilling, um, implications of hydrofracking all over the place. Uh, down in Pennsylvania, they're seeing it uh, really hard right now. Uh, they're seeing their water being polluted, and they're trying to figure out what's, where that pollution is coming from. If it's coming from uh, the, the drilling into the ground, if it's coming from the pollutants that the, the corporations are putting into the ground, um, where exactly this process is starting. Um, so we're here today to let people know that we're looking into this. I mean, people need to be looking into this, uh, especially students. So this Binghamton community has been has been very involved in this issue recently, and the Binghamton University community is, is starting to get involved. I mean, this is the start right here today. Uh, Binghamton Environmental is a group composed of different environmental groups around campus, and we're all coming together because we realize how important this is to our health, to the health of our community, and to the health of everyone, all our neighbors, everyone around here. Uh, so, first up, um, to speak. Okay. Cool. First up, we have Walter Hang from Toxics Targeting. Uh, he's, he used to work at NIFER, did a lot of great work there, and now he is here to speak to us. Unbelievable turnout. You don't know this because you're too young, but SUNY Binghamton was once an epicenter of student organizing in the entire country. And so I'm really happy that you're all here tonight. I'm going to teach you about this issue. I'm going to teach you how you can be really effective advocates in trying to stop it. So my name is Walter Hang. I'm with a company called Toxics Targeting. And I've compiled data on about 590,000 known and potential toxic sites all over New York State. These are landfills, leaking tanks, um, pollution hazards, polluted drinking water supplies, and you can go to toxicstargeting.com, type in your home address, and see if you live near Toxic Go. So what I do is I basically have all these data, this is near the Gowanus Canal, an unbelievable pit and sewer in Brooklyn that's immensely polluted. And that particular site, you see was where they wanted to build a whole food store. And I know you'll be shocked to find out that they never cleaned it up. So it's got naphthalene, lead, mercury, benzoapyrene. This is the same chemical in cigarette smoke that causes lung cancer. So New York has inherited, in effect, a vast legacy of contamination problems. Anyone here from Brooklyn, from Greenpoint, Brooklyn? Well, this is a 30 million gallon underground spill of oil and toxics. And you can see it's underneath hundreds of homes and buildings. I was just over here on Friday, and it is a nasty area. <laughs> this is Southeastern Queens. Anywhere here from Jamaica, Queens? 500,000 people traditionally got water from the ground in Jamaica, Queens. So one day I saw the 193 reports in southeastern Queens, and I mapped and profiled 12,000 sites, including sites involving a chemical called methyl tertiary butyl ether, which is polluted wells in Jamaica. And with my data, the city of New York sued ExxonMobil, and about a year ago they got $104.7 million. I wish I charged more for my organizers and you can work with citizens and you can find pollution problems in almost any single community but the most important thing is you can do something about it so that's kind of the background I'm going to show you two examples of pollution problems that I've been helping to clean up in Little Ithaca New York and I'm going to show you the biggest industrial problem looming in your near future so one day I got tipped off to go to an area in Ithaca called Ithaca Falls it's very famous and I look down and I find millions of little gray pebbles. Well, when I was a little kid and Boy Scout, I blasted more lead into the environment than you could shake a stick at. So I looked at those gray pebbles and I said, wow, this looks like 12 gauge shotgun pellets. And indeed they were. And so the level of lead was 43,000 times the allowable amount. And I wrote a letter to Governor Pataki, but more importantly, I got this huge article in the New York Times that reportedly ruined this Sunday morning and I cut a deal to clean up this site. So here's the factory, we knocked down the factory. The factory was immensely polluted with barium and lead. 
and had polychlorinated bimetal PCB electrical transformers that had leaked all over the place. And now you go by that site, all of that debris is removed. There's a subsurface investigation going on and it's gonna get cleaned up. So that's an example of how you can find problems, document them, and do something about it. Now here is a site in Little Ithaca, New York, where believe it or not, they used to make gas before they didn't get gas out of the ground. This was called manufactured gas. They heat a coal in these giant metal vessels and they cook out the gas. Now the problem is every area marked in red exceeds the applicable standards for coal tar contamination. And you can see it's just spread throughout this entire area. So I found about this problem, I documented it, got press coverage, and then they put up this giant 120 foot long, 60 foot wide building, and they've been digging up all the contamination inside that building. They drive right through those doors, load up these big trucks, they have huge air handling equipment to prevent fumes. So that was manufactured gas that left an incredible legacy of contamination problems. Then beginning in 1821, they started drilling for gas in New York State. And so you can see almost all of the oil and gas wells are out here in Chautauqua, Cattaraugus, and Allegheny counties. Now this is where you basically drill straight down, hit a pocket of gas, and then the gas comes up a pipe. And they recover it, they store it in big metal vessels, and they use it. That's not what we're talking about now. What we're talking about now is a giant rock formation called Marcellus Shale. It's about a mile deep on average. It outcrops in Marcellus, New York, southwest of Syracuse, and it goes all the way to Tennessee. And this is a very narrow little layer of shale. It's from 40 feet to 900 feet. And it, the gas is not pressed in pockets, it's in tiny little microscopic pores. And the only way to get the gas out of that rock is to drill down to the rock, through the rock, and then, believe it or not, pump under tremendous pressure hydrofracking fluid, which has chemicals to make that fluid very, very slippery. When you lift the shale a quarter inch, you fracture the rock for thousands of feet. And that's what all of this equipment is for. This is for a single well pad. And at a single well pad, you can have as many as 16 wells. That giant impoundment is where the millions of gallons of water are stored before they add the chemicals, before they pump it under tremendous pressure to break up the rock. So here's where they start out. Here's the drill rig. This is the equipment that they pump this fracking fluid under pressure. And when it comes back up, it's not only toxic contaminated, it not only has super high levels of salt called total dissolved solids, believe it or not, it's radioactive. So you need tremendous volumes of chemicals because you can use up to five million gallons per well. And this is what they call the goat head. This is where they pump the fracking fluid under tremendous pressure. You can see there's more than one per well pad. You can tell it's a very dirty process. So we have no capacity to handle this wastewater, and this is what's looming. Now, we haven't had any horizontal hydrofracking in the Marcellus Formation, but this could be the biggest gas reserve in the world. This is a potential $2 trillion payday. And so this is the area where they want to frack. Red are impaired water bodies. This delineated area is where people drink water from the ground. So more than 8 million people in this area get their water from ground to surface water that would be threatened by this practice. And this is what it looks like. There are wells just all over the place because everywhere in this formation, there's gas. So once they establish these giant pipelines to bring the gas to market, they're gonna frack every square mile. They're gonna get every drop of gas that they can. You can go to toxicstargeting.com. You can see all the faults. This is near Corning, New York. You can click on a well, and you can literally see the well pad with my internet map server. You can navigate around on Google Earth. 
So Z, whether or not you're from a community that has already had problems. It, I just want to let you know that, again, there are regulations that have been proposed. They have not been adopted. Until those final regulations are adopted, which only address three main issues, there's no hydrofracking in New York. There's been a de facto moratorium for three years, and we want to continue that moratorium on fracking because we know that when the state has overseen drilling in the past, they just had terrible problems. Dale Fox drilling gas well in Bixby Hill Road, Freedom, New York. Natural gas escaped through fault and shale. Affected properties approximately one and a half miles southwest of Weaver Road. So this gas was bubbling up in the guy's pond, in the ditch near his house. 12 families were evacuated and they basically ran for their lives. So the regulation of this kind of activity is very, very weak. Here's a 100,000 gallon spill. No action possible. So these immense pollution problems simply don't get cleaned up. Water wells may be impacted. Hospital the Creek was impacted. 15,000 gallons spill, never cleaned up. So until we get adequate regulations, we're essentially you know, not going to be able to do this practice carefully without causing environmental and health hazards. The data I showed you is from the State Department of Environmental Conservation. When I released it, they said, oh, the accidents are rare. Then I found a guy in Panther, New York, which is only about 30 miles from here. Caller states he can ignite his drinking water that comes out of the faucet. It's been happening approximately one year ago. Caller concerned is about natural gas drilling near him, so they've been investigating for natural gas all around his house. He's a disabled vet from Vietnam. His name is Frederick Mayer. So I filmed him. You can see this video of him igniting his water. And then I got him daily news coverage. I got him coverage in Israel, Hong Kong, all over India. And he's now become like a worldwide phenomenon. This put incredible pressure on the State Department of Environmental Conservation. Once Fred Mayer's problems got uh, tipped off, I got an anonymous call and they said, oh, there are lots of problems that the DC hasn't even revealed. You can see methane gas in water well and house, salty taste in well water, possible gas well contamination, gas, oil, and water. These problems had been known about essentially for decades, but the problem was they had never been cleaned up. So that's kind of the background. We are holding off on drilling. You see these problems were known about 1984. Again, many of these problems never cleaned up. People still living with these contaminated wells. So again, I challenge the DC's assertion that there were very few problems. And then on a final note, I wrote a letter to Governor Patterson. I identified all of these problems, but more importantly, I began to run around to talk to groups like yours. And I've now gotten 10,000 signatories. The pressure on Patterson is intense. And then finally, we got a letter from the US Environmental Protection Agency. And EPA basically said to DEC that they don't think that the regulations are adequate. And he says, in conclusion, EPA believes that New York State DEC has prepared an informative draft supplemental generic environmental impact statement. But basically, they're concerned about water supply, water quality, wastewater treatment. They really don't like anything about this ramp, and that's why we've been working to try to kill it, send it back to the drawing board so that when drilling happens, if it happens, it's going to be done safely. So that's the background, and if you have any questions, we'll try to answer them later. Thanks so much.